last week was crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This week's gonna be even crazier because every week with us pond people is totally, totally crazy. But last week with that spring sale and stuff, it feels so good to be done. But I'll have to tell you, I can't get out of the back of my mind, Greg Woodstock. He came in for the event and as fast as he came in, he left and I'll have to say I miss him just like, like a little. Like, like a little bit. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys miss him too. I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious and what the heck does the owner of the company do on a day-to-day -day basis now that he doesn't live here in the St. Charles area. He's out in Utah. Pay attention to this episode because he's gonna show you what, not only I wanna know what he's up to, but you guys wanna know what he's up to. He's gonna show you what he's been up to the last couple weeks in Utah and I know he's killing it. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a fun, fun episode. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. All right, guys, start of a new week. It is gonna be, I think, an exhausting week because I'm so tired after a long weekend. And I don't know why, because I should be excited. No, I am excited because we're back in construction mode and we're doing all kinds of stuff. But this week, particularly, we're tying up a bunch of loose ends. And when I think of loose ends, it's all the things that we couldn't tie up last year. It's things that have been pending for a little bit. It's challenges that customers are having with their ponds. So first stop, the place that we're at now, it's a home that we built a pond for last year, last October, November. And it's it's been leaking since the day we put it in. <sighs> yes, I'll admit I screwed up, right? I really, really messed this up. No, wait a second. I didn't mess it up. Like, I didn't set the boulders in here. Somebody else clearly messed it up. <laughs> but I'm here to help clean it up, I guess. So we've got a pond that's got a huge leak in it. In fact, it's losing 10 inches of water a day and we can't figure it out. A lot of times when we try to look for stuff like that, we do these secret, these different tests, which we'll go into in a little bit, but it's definitely leaking in the pond. It's not the waterfall, it's not the stream, it's not the plumbing, it's not seals on skimmers and biofalls. It is a hole in the liner. So we're gonna fix this thing. Plus, you guys are sneaking out to Utah with Greg. So there's a lot going on. But right now, why don't I take you over here where we've developed quite a mess and I'm gonna take you step by step through how we're gonna go through this project and figure out where this hole is at. Come on. You can see here, Jack is looking in this area here. We know the water level drops down just about to the bottom of the skimmer face there. We're gonna start pulling out this rock. We're gonna pull out this rock. We're gonna pull out this rock. And we're gonna pull out that big one because it does drop all the way down to the bottom of that rock. It doesn't go any lower than that. And if you can see, the base of these rocks are even lower than those. So I'm hoping we only have to take out these rocks in through here. Then we can put everything back together. I'm hoping we find a hole over in this area. Otherwise, we're going to be out here for two days because to replace the liner from the skimmer box through all of this would mean also rebuilding this waterfall because that pond liner comes up and underneath this and then the streamliner overlaps so we'd have to remove all of those we'd also have to remove a very detailed dac retaining wall in there with boulders cut around into the edges there so we've got a lot to do you can see jack's already getting pretty muddy i'm going to give him a little bit of a tip here and hopefully he gets going a little faster but it is looking for a needle in a haystack and we'll see what we can do. All right, guys, wish us the best. Hello, Team Aquascape viewers. It's Reg Whitstock, the pond guy, and Kurt Davidson, our local sales rep, because we are in beautiful Heber City, Utah, which is my new hometown. Love it out here. And this is how we're gonna get Heber City Aquascape. We're starting with this young lady over here, Megan, who's the owner of Country Gardens, our local and only garden center in Heber City. And we are gonna be doing three projects here, a fountainscape, a pondless waterfall, and a pond. So right Right here, starting today, we're gonna dig a hole. Right over here, we're gonna dig another hole and put a basin at the entrance to the building. That's gonna be a fountainscape. That's gonna be a pond list. And then of course, the third one, I am the pond guy after all. The piece de resistance is we're gonna put a pond right up here at the entrance to the whole facility. But Country Gardens out here in Heber City, Utah, my beautiful new hometown. This is gonna be a old fashioned build a pond day. So we have about 15 contractors coming. We have three certified aquascape contractors that are gonna be out here helping. And we're gonna have some fun. You ready to do this, Mark? Hey, are you guys going to teach this guy how to build a pond today? <laughs> My first one. <laughs> how many years, Mark? 27 years. So we got Mark Hellman, the Utah Pond Guy, our first certified aquascape contractor in Utah. And you got some, hey, isn't it nice to have a labor pool? It is. <laughs> Besides, <laughs> He's right there. Besides, besides your son, yes. <laughs> and Frank, our other CAC out here. 
Okay, so that's a pretty big basin. <laughs> a lot of splash well, zone for wind. You figure you got your big. The yep. big will sit here. Probably go your medium and your smaller. Yeah, so well, big will sit here. This will be the big. Go our medium and maybe a small. Right, so that everybody pulls in right here. The first thing they'll see is this on the corner of the greenhouse and right outside of the office. Big. The scalloped urn. So he's talking about the small scalloped urn, the medium, and the large. And what will the basin be in terms of number of gallons? It'll be about 500. 500 gallon basin. How many total aqua blocks are we using? So we're using 52 aqua blocks. Small ones, right? 52 smalls, but we're going to double stack them. 17 gallons each aqua block. Versus 32, okay. yeah. Versus 32 on the large. 884 gallon basin, which means this can run year round. So we're going to put the basin in right here, make the waterfall come right off of the corner there. And then probably right, right around where you're standing would be the basin there. Six feet from the edge, which is nice. So we'll have a nice little, yeah. Basically, it's gonna be a one foot high waterfall and a stream probably. So the basin's going right here. So this is a one foot high waterfall, six foot run probably or so, Mark, you yeah, said? Foot. Yeah. Perfect location. Which way would you like the basin? Yep, yep, yep. I'll use my eraser. I like that eraser. It's going to be done. All right, and there is the basin. This is what you guys are going to be digging in, okay? Just like that. So that has got to be just below the ground level. That's how much you have to dig. 17 inches. So dig 18 inches. Vamanos. <laughs> It is 9.30 a.m. on day one, and the first scoops are coming out. For the first aqua basin project, we got Frank the Tank coming over with his excavator to excavate basin. Michelle, Mom, what do you think? Oh, we are so excited to have you guys here today. It's fun. This is going to be the biggest two-day transition in the history of this place. We can't wait. The sound of water is going to fill this entire property. It will be amazing for people to be able to come into the nursery and hear that and just... It'll, it'll put them more at ease. It, it'll change the space. So we've got all the major rocks out of here. We've got this area. We're going to come in here, thoroughly clean this, because literally a hole a little bit bigger than the size of a end of a pencil could contribute to the amount of water that they're losing a day. So we're really looking for something obvious. We're also going to check the seal on that skimmer box. I didn't like those big boulders sitting around it to begin with, but we'll get that double checked, make sure nothing's going on there. The other thing we might do, fill this baby back up. Yeah, I don't know. We're still puzzled. I what I don't want to do is rip out this whole pond because it's first it looks so nice and it would just be so much extra work. So hopefully we find something. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So Frank, company name? Living Artscapes Incorporated. And brand new in Utah, but for how many years in Maryland? Since 2007. And the reason that you moved to Utah, you can see right over your shoulder, the beautiful mountains. Ah. An endless opportunity. Amen. We're just figuring out where to put this pond here. And we just determined that everybody coming up this way, it would be cool to have the waterfalls. Remember, we're only going up about 18, 20 inches. Coming right here, facing all of those cars, especially at night with the lights. And then twisting it, coming down, the edge of the pond is right where AJ's feet are, 11 feet across, and then put the skimmer in right over here so we have a good circulation. That is the concept. like so annoying like I could see why fixing leaks well I could actually see why trying to be a pond builder and if your first pond leaked or your second pond leaked how quickly you would get out of this profession 99.9% .9 of the time a leak is not a hole in the liner it's always a low edge someplace up in the waterfall the stream it's a seal on a skimmer a seal on a bio falls a low edge on the pond something like that almost never is it a hole today we are praying <laughs> Praying to the pond gods that today it would be a hole because we can't find the low edge. There's nothing wrong with the plumbing. When we do our tests on the waterfall and the stream, everything holds. The pond gods have answered, and yes, Mr. Pazinski found a hole. But what I want to show you guys is just how crazy. Now, this pond holds about a thousand gallons of water, give or take a hundred or so. They were adding about 10 inches of water a day, which would give us about a 300 to 400 gallon loss per day, all caused by this size hole right there. 
You can see Jack's little gremlin-like finger <laughs> trying to come through that hole. That hole is about a quarter inch, 100%. That's a big enough hole to lose that amount of water on this size pond, especially with the soil that they have underneath, kind of a sandy clay mix. That water's just disappearing. So good news is we found the hole. Yes, that's it. Like I've never been more excited about a hole in a pond in my entire life. Like. <laughs> You can, see, you can see I want to do a backflip, but I can't. I'd be out for the rest of the year. Anyways, we're gonna fix this hole. Super simple, it's like fixing a patch on a tire. There was a couple different ways we could have gone about tackling, looking for this leak, especially in the pond. Like we knew the pond was losing water. So 100%, there was a hole in the pond. Two ways to go about it. One would have been to come in here super aggressive and just rip everything out. And then a lot of times that actually makes so much more sense because looking for that needle in the haystack, it can take hours hours and hours and hours. Hogging out the pond, just ripping out all the rock, all the gravel, the liner and everything. We can get that done in a couple hours. Like there's no rhyme or reason on how to get it out. You just get it all out. Today, we chose to go at it a little bit more cautiously and slowly rip one rock out at a time, hoping to find that needle in the haystack underneath one of these big boulders. Today, that actually paid off. And the reason we did that was a couple things. So let me show you. If I ripped out out everything really aggressively. There's no way that machine was gonna be able to get to the same position it was when we built this pond, which was right here. This fire pit was not here, so that machine sat on this patio and could easily sit out and reach waterfall rocks over in there, reach rocks over here, reach rocks over there. It had a lot more flexibility. So if I were to rip this whole thing out, I would have had to start ripping out things from here, then drive that machine right through the center of the pond to reach these rocks all the way over here, because this is all still considered pond. We would have also then had to rip out that stacked brick wall right over there and then recut stuff to sit in there. So ripping it out would have been really, really easy. Putting it back together would have taken us easily another day, day and a half. So today things paid off. We got a big win. We found the hole back down over there and it made a whole lot more sense to do it this way. So now we're going to go back. We're going to pad everything so you can see Jack down here getting all the fabric ready, making sure that the soil is clean underneath the fabric. There's no big rocks or loose rocks or small rocks underneath there. We're gonna put down some extra padding. We're gonna pull back that liner, make sure there's no gravel anywhere on top of the liner, and then we'll start setting these boulders back in place. I'm hoping we get 90% of this thing done today and tomorrow we're just back here, kind of tweaking things and making sure everything's operational. Here we go, let's put it all back together. All right, Mark, what do you got? So we got an eight by 11 pond. We're gonna put our skimmer down over here, easy access to some electrical. We're gonna build our waterfall. We're gonna start here. Oh, over there on the side, okay. Yeah, we're on the, kind of the side so we can use and yep. any cars coming to the sea, we're gonna drop here and then into the pond and then it'll pull over to there. Right, so the goal is to put the waterfall on one side and then have the skimmer pull from the other. And then of course, this whole berm will get landscaped. And that is how a certified Aquascape contractor draws a waterfalls, right? That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Keep it simple, stupid. And make sure to wiggle the fingers. Don't forget the wiggling. Yes, there you go. <laughs> All right, clearing a path for the Kubota. When you got an excavator, why not use it? Although this would be an easy one to do by hand, although the digging will not be the easiest in that gravel. All right, there goes the first scoop, or not necessarily a scoop. We're gonna go a foot down the whole way, and then we'll probably do a lot of hand stuff for the last foot. But the first shelf, all the way around, one foot down. All right, we're just doing a little cutout of the lower level here. Hand, but we got the machine here. So we're just cutting a little deeper area section in here. So the whole thing, we've been going now for almost an hour. So not bad. All right, finishing up the bottom excavation. This is always fun. The Aquascape product shipped out of St. Charles, Illinois and arrives in time to build a pond. We're supposed to get here last week, but now it's here this week. These are the urns that we're gonna be putting in and all of this is gonna turn and live in the Aquascape lifestyle. 
Step one, locate the hole. Second, clean the liner. Once you've thought it's clean enough, then clean it again, and then clean it one more time. Now this is a newer liner, so there's not a bunch of stuff on it, but an older liner will have a ton of like calcium buildup from the water, other iron sediments and stuff, just depending on your water source. You have to get all of that stuff off of there. If that stuff is on, there's no way the seam tape is gonna adhere, the patch tape is gonna adhere to the liner. So you gotta get it super, super clean. Step three, dry the liner off. There can't be any condensation, no moisture at all of any kind. So he uses a heat gun, gets it really, really clean. If it's hot outside, you don't need a heat gun. Usually if it's above 80 degrees, it'll just dry by itself. But in the winter months or in the cooler times of the year, where condensation can actually build up on the liner, it's really important to have that heat gun. Once he's got it cleaned and then all dried off, he's gonna go ahead and take our primer right here. Can't do a patch without the primer. The primer actually helps melt the seam tape to the liner there. So Jack's gonna take a scrap piece of fabric here, dip it into the primer. A paintbrush works really well too. Jack is fighting me on my paintbrush method. I like your paintbrush, I just don't have any. <laughs> I'm the one that actually likes them too. <laughs> He's gonna prime an area about 20% larger than the actual patch, making sure that that patch will adhere everywhere. On really good, he's also making sure that the primer's not coming in any contact with any of the moisture from the other area around there. Then you can see our patch area here. We've got a piece of patch tape about 100 times larger than our size of our hole. I'm safe and sorry, you know? But this is the size that we, we get six inch pieces of patch tape and that'll be perfect. So he just peels that off slaps it on and now this area is about 300 times stronger than the original liner used to be so at the very least we know jack that a hole there won't happen again right maybe yep. what we should do is just cover the entire liner with seam tape before we uh, get going good idea jack you told me before you remember setting this rock yeah i do uh, so, so i, I get... so i think it was my fault okay. so i'll take 100 percent blame for this rock <laughs> told you it wasn't my fault i told you <laughs> there is even no... even if it wasn't my fault it still be blamed on me yeah, part of the team and really Jack, I'm gonna take this time to blame it on Tyler because he's the new guy you, and yeah. no longer are you the new guy. So well, Tyler, he's the newest guy hopefully, over there, hopefully you've learned your lesson <laughs> and you'll sorry. never make this I'll mistake again. again. All right, <laughs> Tyler, what did I tell you? What would be some of the precautions we would take if we were to do this all over again? What's the most important side of the liner to add if we're underneath, setting big boulders? Underneath because the small little rocks, once you get the big rocks on top, all the weight being on such a little tiny little piece yep. is gonna just really grow grind a tiny little hole and like you said that little hole right there is all it took to drain this thing out yeah so pretty amazing all right bud way to learn from your mistakes thank you <laughs> <laughs> so we are prepared to be out here for two solid days ripping that whole thing apart and replacing the liner and everything else we're gonna probably be out here for about a day and a quarter only because we're gonna add a spillway bowl for them just because of their patience and all the heartache they've had to deal with so we're gonna give them a little gift little additional waterfall off on the side and hopefully that amends our big screw up. I'm so glad we found that leak though. Hey, thanks to Megan for hosting us guys. How about that? Let the aqua block games begin. We gotta build 26 aqua blocks. And these, of course, will all go in a structural void space for the basin. Beautiful day. Build upon it. Dump site modify the aqua block, right? So we're gonna have to cut an aqua block. When you get a blister on your foot where that liner, the smallest pinhole, turns into a bigger hole. <sighs> you start losing a little bit of water there, roots are gonna find its way to that water source and that'll create a bigger hole. Underlayment and liner going in. Biofalls on one side, skimmer on the other. Don't step in the skimmer hole. Washing the rocks down. First time I've ever done one where I've had three hoses going. Okay, now it's time to build the waterfall, just after lunch. All right, setting the character boulders, and then we're gonna cover it in gravel. 
All right, it's all coming together. The last 10% makes all the difference in the world. This is the decorations on a Christmas tree. We always say when you put the plants in. And so we're just trying to keep low going on the side. Got a little bit of height there, that's okay. We've got two foot high plants going in right there to kind of soften that back wall. And then we got a big backdrop for everybody driving by, school buses coming home. Everybody is gonna look at this waterfalls when they come by. Cannot wait to see that running. We give birth to a one of a kind custom creation. It's so fun. Okay, hold on. This is. You guys ready to start this? Woo! All right, let's go mom and daughter. Here we go. Okay, okay, here it comes. That's a cool rock, Rank. Even dribbling a little bit. Look at that, I love how that shoots out. And there we go, what do you guys think, huh? Yeah. Good work, good work. Let's everybody round their hand for each other, huh? <laughs> All right, let's gather around here for a group picture. <laughs> the Pondless Waterfall, the third and final. A little bit of <laughs> marks, putting it in. It's already the Christmas tree without the decorations. Everybody watching the waterfalls come to life. What do you think? Yes? So what'd you just say? I said, it's making tears roll down my eyes. It's that beautiful healing energy of water. It's just fills your soul. I mean, it's stunning. <laughs> Amen, sister. That's the power of water. Um, look at it, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, what else could you put there, huh? <laughs> yes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. And wait till it gets landscaped, and then in the wintertime when it's got ice formations oh, on it. It's so stunning. And, and you see we have color changing lights, so everybody will see that when they pull in. Oh, it just makes my spirit sing. Amen. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Well, with water running, that means that's a wrap. <sighs> Not bad, right? Sucks having to fix that hole, but I'm glad we went the cautious way rather than hogging it all out. Like we said before, we could have just gone in here and like crazy ripped the whole thing out in a couple hours, but we would still be here today and tomorrow fixing this. We spent a couple hours here this morning, Jack. We just tidied some stuff up. We finished filling the water level up. We got that bowl running. We got the pump and all that stuff in there. The next step, do you know what the next step is? For them to enjoy it. <laughs> very close, very close. The next step is I want to come in here, we're going to mark the water level, and I want to make sure this thing doesn't drop a half an inch. If it drops a little bit, like a quarter inch, someplace in there, not a big deal because we've got a bowl running over here, we've got multiple waterfalls over there, it's 90 degrees outside, they're going to lose some water due to evaporation, but we want to make sure they're not losing 10 inches a day. So we turn the corner, and what do we see? Yes! We see the beautiful aquascape scalloped urns running. They just have a couple of trees put around them. And I love this. The last 10% make all the difference in the world. Not a huge technical thing to put these in. Of course, you've never done it before. It's hard. It's really just digging a hole and hooking up a little bit of plumbing and then aesthetically putting in some boulders. But listen to that sound and think about that. Everybody coming right there is going to see that the first thing when they pull in and that's going to run year round i can't wait to see that in the winter and let's go see the little pondless waterfall over here oh my gosh how nice is this they just have a lot of their plants just put around here right now but just look at that a cute little pondless waterfall that could fit in any space at all that you have and look at that there's the, the two do it yourself or prices and do it for me right there's a small pondless waterfall that will absolutely transform a space. And then we have one last thing over here to show what it looks like. Once again, they've got all of the plants just kind of around it. I know eventually we want to put a patio here and get some more water lilies in there. But here is the water garden that uh, I got to work on. I worked mostly on this. And there's the prices. Always important to put the prices. And what I like to illustrate with this is this is people need to see water features. This bench needs to be put right here. A little patio needs to be added. Imagine that in your yard, how enjoyable that could be. And this is just done, but when it fills up with aquatic plants and fish, and I got a fish cave down there, this will be fantastic for them to get people living the aquascape lifestyle. This is what this business is all about. 
getting people into it that are professionals so that pond's done right, customers serve right, and more people could be living the Aquascape lifestyle. I love being on Team Aquascape. <laughs> We started off the week with almost replacing an entire liner on a pond, but we carefully, meticulously found that hole. We found the needle in the haystack, which is so hard to do, but we did it. And you guys got to see three ponds built in one day out in Utah. If you thought that was a lot, it's nothing compared to what's gonna happen next week. Next week, Chris and Ed Ballou are heading back to Shaquille O'Neal's house. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Shaquille O'Neal is doing a bigger project because he is the biggest guy I've ever met and why would he do anything smaller than what we did before? So they're out there, they're gonna get some prep work done, get a bunch of stuff done. You guys make sure you tune in next week where the Shaquille O'Neal is getting an extreme makeover. See you next week. You know what to do, like, comment, subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this week with all the little tips and tricks that we did and we'll keep doing this. Bye.